Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another one of our in understanding sections here. This one on understanding Marlborough in New Zealand and Sauvignon Blanc on the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. Um, this is brilliant for those of you studying your WSET level three. It gives you plenty of information on a small subject um, that may come up in your theory examination. Um, so included in this at the end is a working written question of around sort of 10, 12 marks, um, which is a lot less than you'll get in your examination, but it gives you an idea of the type of questions that they may ask in the examination. Also included in this, we'll go through some maps, we'll go through some infographics about Sauvignon Blanc, a Google Earth video, and then all the information around grape growing and winemaking that you will be required to understand. So. First of all, here we go in the uh, the country of New Zealand. And New Zealand is a, a very small country which is set um, just off from um, uh, from Australia. It sits at something like uh, nearly two thousand kilometres away from uh, Australia in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it is sp split into two islands: the North Island, which has the capital of Wellington, uh, which is at the bottom and the main city or the largest city of Auckland towards the top. And then the much cooler Southern Island, uh, which is actually quite important for its white wine production. What I have identified here, um, first of all, is the bottom here. It says the Southern Alps. Okay, so I just want to get uh, help you sort of get a feel for the kind of landscape of this area. Uh, okay, so the Southern Alps is an extensive mountain range which stretches from just below Nelson and Marlborough and then all the way down towards the bottom part of New Zealand near Dunedin. Uh, this is situated more towards the west of the island and offers protection from the Tasman Sea and the westerly wind. So we get significant amount of westerly winds affecting this area. Let me put that in. But of course, for this area, you'll find that it is protected. So most of our vineyards, in fact, nearly all of them, are found on the eastern side, and that's central Otago, uh, around Canterbury, um, Waipara, uh, and of course, Marlborough. Nelson is the only one that's not completely um, protected, but it still has some hills protecting that area. Um, so that is your sort of topography of the landscape. Um, and Marlborough is nestled there in the top right hand corner the, the kind of northwesterly point sorry the northeasterly point of the south island around the city of blenheim uh, and just to the north is the gorgeous marlborough sounds and uh, picton where you get the ferry to wellington marlborough the wine region accounts for around 79 percent of the production of the whole of new zealand it is the real power horse uh, district region in New Zealand due to its kind of fame in the 1980s with these very distinctive and aromatic Sauvignon Blancs which were first crafted and now continually produced. Um, so a very famous area, very famous wine region. Um, the Sauvignon Blanc that's here is you know well over 20,000 hectares and in terms of global statistics it is only second really to France but uh, if you were to add up the Loire Valley and add up the Mar Marlborough, they'll probably be very similar in terms of total production. So it's certainly an important area for Sauvignon Blanc. Um, the whole area down here, so it is a cool maritime climate which is identified there. Now it's a little bit warmer um, up in the North Island, a warm maritime, but here it is a cool maritime climate in the South Island that we're talking about. Um, so affected by oceans uh, and winds, um, affected by the Tasman, the westerly wind. Um, so that's why we are finding it as a maritime uh, and cooler because of course temperatures drop here. We are really quite low in latitude when we get to the southern island. Um, a lot of the exhibitions that go off towards um, Antarctica will go off from the, from the southern tip of New Zealand. Um, so it's a rather cool area. Um, one thing they do have, though, is um, very little cloud cover, and you'll actually find quite a significant amount of sunshine hours in places like Marlborough. Um, so there's, in fact, a, an, an extended amount of sunshine hours in comparison to the Loire Valley, which often gets um, put up against 
Uh, so around sort of 2,000 to 2,200 hours of sunlight per year, a really key fact in why you often get a lot more tropical notes and sweeter notes, like passion fruit, for instance, in the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, weather issues here, um, frosts don't tend to be the biggest problem around Marlborough, although they can happen, of course, uh, generally due to the wind. Uh, but there are issues with frost and you'll often see um, in some areas where there are frost pockets, uh, wind machines are in place across Marlborough. So frost can be an issue. Rainfall though, it is a maritime climate, so rainfall does th uh, sort, of, sort of threaten throughout the year and specifically towards harvest where it can actually cause dilution. Uh, which is a big issue for in terms of lower, lowering the quality. So rainfall certainly is probably the biggest, um, the biggest problem, uh, as mentioned in your WSET level three textbooks. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking at that northern tip of the South Island, the sort of north easterly tip of the South Island, and that's around the city of Blenheim, uh, just south of the Marlborough Sounds and Picton, where you get that ferry to Wellington in the southern tip of the North Island, which is the capital city of Wellington. Okay, so let's move on to uh, looking a little bit closer at uh, this area. So the principal grape variety is Sauvignon Blanc of Marlborough, as you are well aware. Sauvignon Blanc accounts for about 75% of the total production of New Zealand. Uh, so it's a real uh, leading grape variety, significantly leading grape variety. But also here you will find in Marlborough some good Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, but also other aromatics like Riesling and Pinot Gris. Um, but it's the Sauvignon Blanc that we'll focus on certainly the most because that's the only one they require you to really focus on for your um, your WSET level three. So um, in the top area here, which is the kind of brownish shade, it says the Wairo Valley. So the Wairo Valley is the valley which it, which which comes from uh, sort of the northern area and it empties towards around Blenheim, which is the key city of, uh, of Marlborough. North of that, it goes towards Picton, as you can see here at the top of this picture, and that is where you'd gain the ferry to go to Wellington on the, um, the south tip of the North Island. And if you head this road up here towards the northwest, uh, you head towards Nelson, uh, which is a gorgeous, uh, a gorgeous town on the uh, seafront with a wine region around it as well. The Wairi Valley, because it's around Blenheim, it's really where it all started here. Uh, is the largest of the um, sub-districts of Marlborough. Marlborough has three. You'll see here there's three colours. The brownish area we're talking about, a bluish area, which is the southern area, and then Abatere. They only require you to know about these two that are identified here. So the Wairi Valley is large. Because it's large, it's varied. Um, there are flatlands, of course, in that central area along the river, but uh, you will have lots of little side valleys and various side valleys, which will give you different aspects, different slopes, uh, different drainage capabilities. Um, as ever, here you'll get plenty of good sun, uh, so long sunny days in excess of 2,000 hours uh, per year, which gives you that real capable amount of ripening. Um, so the Wairo Valley tends to be those that are um, more tropical in taste, those typical Marlborough New Zealand's tropical, but also herbaceous at the same time, um, but quite punchy, quite pronounced and very aromatic. So down in the southern part around Seddon is the Awateri Valley. The Awateri Valley is a cooler area. It's due to its latitude, a bit more sort of mountainous aspect down there as well, and it's a smaller sub-district. It's cooler, it's uh, more of a funneled area, so it gets much more windier as well. So the Awateri Valley then, being cooler, windier, tends to produce Sauvignon Blancs, which are a little bit more refined. The acidity is a bit brighter, you'll get a bit of a minerality behind it, and they often have that more sort of herbaceous note to them. So uh, you'll often find the green bell pepper, um, the kind of um, fennelly character is quite distinctive from the Awateri, less of the tropical sort of uh, notes, that passion fruit or mango or sort of um, guava character is, very, is much more diminished in this area. 
Okay, so there's some two sort of specific areas uh, which are quite important for you to know. Um, we're now going to have a look at a quick video just to get sort of your whereabouts of this. It may be that there's a bit of sneaky central Otago in this, but let me uh, let me just have a look. Um, this video I haven't looked at in a while. Uh, uh, no, I think we're just looking at Marlborough. Excellent. So this is going to be our Marlborough. Just a couple of um, couple of minutes, so you can get a good feel for it. So it's going towards Wellington, but we're not going to go to Wellington because we're heading towards here. So here is Blenheim. Rennick as well, which is that middle area. And of course, the whole of this is the Wairo Valley area for wine. Uh, so this is the valley center. You can see lots of side valleys going off here where you'll get different aspects. Um, some vineyards are planted on slopes, but most of it is in that flatter land because of course, a lot of this is planted to the Sauvignon Blanc that we typically find in affordable New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. So this is your um, your kind of real typical herbaceous but tropical tasting stuff with high acidities behind them. The land tends to be quite flat there. You can see in the valley itself, quite fertile. So there is actually lots of um, canopy management that must be maintained here um, to get the best out of the wine. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later as well. So that's your Wairo Valley area, okay? Now we're gonna go down just below that to that second valley. And there is Seddon, as you can see, and this is the Awatere Valley. Remember that this is your kind of cooler, slightly drier and windier area. But you can also see it's much smaller. Of course, it fans out a little bit along the Awatere here on the coastal zone. But as you go inland, it becomes a little bit more um, complex. Um, this is, will make generally your herbaceous and mineral laden styles. Often people will state that these are a little bit more like your uh, Loire Valley expressions in the Awatere Valley. Um, but of course, there are various types made uh, in this area. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea of the zones, the Wairo Valley, and then this one, the Awatere Valley for the Marlborough zone. Brilliant. So that is your, your look there at the Marlborough region, once again, up from high. Let's go back to our presentation. Great, we've just done the video. Um, so a bit about grape growing again. So vine the vineyards here are often... Um, uh, on the east of the island, as we mentioned, so on that uh, on that right hand side, protected from the Tasman Sea, certainly by the Southern Alps. As you can see, um, they're rather mountainous, and uh, on the last couple of maps, and certainly the Google Earth, you saw the topography, the landscape here, and the intensity of those mountains. So they offer a great protection against the very wet winds of the Tasman. Um, the rainfall, once again, just to reiterate, is problematic. Uh, it can be quite problematic during ripening as well as towards harvest. Uh, so, of course, this can lead to problems around mildew, but also things like um, uh, um, rot and dilution at the same time. Um, the soils, though, do tend to be, for the most part, um, being geologically young, they're actually quite well-draining soils. So um, they do, therefore, uh, work quite well with Mother Nature. Um, but there are some slightly more fertile soils which we find on the valley floor. We saw them on the Google Earth video that follows both of the rivers on the Wairo and the Abatere. Uh, and those flat fertile lands, which will be higher in nutrients uh, and richer fertile soils, will lead to more vigorous vines, more productive vines. That is what we call vigor, excess of vigor. So very um, intensive canopy management, including a lot of pruning, will need to be done to make sure that your vines don't grow too extensively. If, that, if you don't keep that in check, you'll end up producing wines which are quite high yielding. Um, and quite herbaceous in character, overtly green in character, certainly because there's less ripeness in each of the berries. Um, so yeah, intensive cap, uh, canopy management techniques are adopted here, and there's been a hell of a lot of work in New Zealand around this due to the fertility of those valley floor zones. So Sauvignon Blanc is your principal grape variety, as we mentioned, 75% of New Zealand's total production, which makes it probably the 
uh, country in the world which relies on a single variety the most. Uh, if Sauvignon Blanc became unfashionable, there would be issues with uh, this 75% new uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So a big whopping amount produced of Sauvignon Blanc, very popular style of course. The variety is mainly early ripening, maybe early to mid ripening, um, but here in New Zealand, it ripens really, really easily due to the fact of this excessive amount of sunlight, but it is in colder conditions. Um, early picking, so um, grape growers and vignerons can decide to pick their grapes a little bit on the early side. Um, this will increase what's called the metaoxypyrazines, or often just pyrazines. Now, this is something that's not mentioned in your textbooks, uh, and it's a little bit towards the kind of WSET level four, but I think it's very important to help you understand um, stylistically what can be produced with Sauvignon Blanc. So this early picking means that there is going to be less ripeness of the grapes and less of the flavor profile, which we expect like tropical, uh, tropical and green fruit notes. But the metaoxypyrazines, which are things that we find in green pepper, green bell pepper, asparagus, nettle, grass, um, these are quite strong at this point. They tend to be diminished with more riper grapes. But if you pick early, you will actually have a dominating effect of these. And the Kiwis in New Zealand have quite a specific uh, taste for this. And of course, around the world, it's quite liked by the general public, this kind of tropical but very green herbaceous pe green peppery character. So early picking is done uh, for Sauvignon Blanc to maintain that character. But of course, you will strategically pick uh, Sauvignon Blanc at different times. Um, so you'll have different flavor profiles around it. Um, the cool climate of Marlborough, as we mentioned, it's cool maritime, promotes these very bright acidities. It's what Sauvignon Blanc needs. It needs cooler conditions. So that really is what drives through citric and green fruits in the wines due to those high acids and sometimes minerality as well. And those long sunshine hours in excess of 2,000 hours per year ripens those tropical notes, that kind of guava passion fruit characteristic, which I think is the most, uh, the most uh, sort of famous thing for it, certainly in the Wairo Valley zone. Um, so it's a highly aromatic grape variety. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, as you know, very aromatic. Um, producing it in the winery, it is often to protect those aromatics. And we do have another video up, which is about the central vineyards in the Loire. So there are there is an overlap here of these characteristics. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the New Zealand side of things. It's common for the reduction, uh, the reductive winemaking, and that is via inert vessels such as stainless steel. Very, very common. And often with selected yeasts, this is inoculated yeast, which will tend to produce the typicity of Sauvignon Blanc, you know, those very specific green and tropical notes to them. Um, sulfur dioxide will be used to maintain freshness throughout, controlled usage of this, of course. Um, skin contact tends to be avoided, though some will to create a little bit more texture uh, and very clean musts, uh, you know, off its heavy deposits um, with um, with some form of sedimentation or uh, or filtering. Um, cool fermentation temperatures uh, with the selected yeasts will tend to then push forward these very aromatic profiles, which are tropical, um, as we know. And the characteristics such as malo lactic fermentation or conversion and yeast autolysis will tend to be avoided. Uh, so this is um, this is really to protect the aromatics of the grape. And Sauvignon, not so much in New Zealand, actually, um, but it can be blended with Semillon. This is more common in France and in Australia, certainly Western Australia. But Semillon is normally the pairing partner uh, of, of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, now, one thing to mention immediately, I've not gone into it too much detail here because it's actually done in more detail on the other video on the central vineyards and Sancerre, etc., is actually how you produce Sauvignon Blanc as a fuller or richer style. So not as this aromatic, fresh um, sort of style. And that is by things that are mentioned a little bit here. So blending with Semillon will create a bit more body and texture, but you can have malolactic, you could have 
um, yeast autolysis, lees aging. Uh, you could also have uh, wild yeast fermentations and even things like oak are used in certain areas in the world, like in Napa Valley. Uh, and also in, in Pesac Lénon in Bordeaux, which will create these more fuller, richer styles. So certainly make sure you have a look at that to understand that, because WSET do like to ask that question. Um, so Sauvignon is normally produced as a dry, acidic, and minerally style with these kind of characteristics, flavor-wise and aroma-wise. Um, the things like green pepper, uh, grassy and asparagus, you can get this minerality behind it, gooseberry, lime, lemon, passion fruit, but things like guava as well, fennel, chamomile, elderflower are all things which certainly Sauvignon Blanc is quite famous for. Um, right, so a little bit of a partial written question so you understand how questions could be formed. This is going to be um, more focused towards New Zealand, of course. Uh, the first thing here is you've got a label on the left-hand side of Serasan. Uh, in fact, the holding picture at the start of this pres presentation was from the Serasan vineyard. Uh, this is a great vineyard and biodynamic. Sauvignon Blanc, Marlborough, New Zealand. Very simple label for us, but uh, really we're saying state and describe the climate of this wine. It's clearly saying Marlborough on it, so we need to talk about Marlborough. Marlborough is a cool maritime. That will get you two marks, mentioning the warmth of it and the, dis the distinctive macro climate. So cool maritime. Rainfall though here will fall all year round, especially um, around harvest time. It's uh, often most uh, feared. Long sunshine hours and these nights that are cooled by sea breezes. Remember, these are wonderful valleys uh, and this will go towards Blenheim. Uh, and these cool breezes can, and cool down the landscape, of course. So this is your um, description there for six marks. So two for the cooler maritime, rainfall, and that's uh, specifically around harvest, that's two marks there, long sunshine hours, and those nights that are cooled by sea breezes will get you the total of six marks on that.